It's a common enough practice for web designers to create a, a background image that tiles across the background of their website. And you might often wonder, how do the web designers, how do they get the tiles to fit so seamlessly into one another? So when they're tiled beside each other, that there's no seam, it's not obvious to the user that there's a join there. Um, if you were to do that yourself, just using normal image manipulation techniques, it would be quite tricky. So luckily there's a, a feature in Photoshop called the Offset Filter that will help us uh, do that for us. So I've got Photoshop set up here and I want to create one of these tiles, one of these uh, website background tiles that will fit in uh, very, very neatly in, uh, to one another. So I'm going to go to the File menu and I'm going to click on New. And straight away, I'm presented with options of what size of canvas that I want in Photoshop. Now, for web background tiles, it really depends on how complicated your uh, your your pattern is going to be and how big it is going to be. Uh, but for this exercise, I'm just going to do a 300 by 300 uh, dimension. So if I didn't have 300 and 300 in here, my width and height, I'd, I'd obviously have to go in there and change it. Resolution at 72 pixels per inch, that's fine for the web. And so I'm going to click OK there. And there's my canvas, and I'm going to drag that window into the center a little bit and make it a bit bigger so that I can have a, plenty of room to work with. So I just need to think about a particular type of pattern that I, I could put in here. Depending on the type of pattern that you go for, you might need to spend quite a lot of time uh, designing this pattern. But I don't have time there here in this uh, tutorial, so I'm going to go for something quite basic but effective, hopefully, nonetheless. So I'm going to click a kind of a darkish type of navy here. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click on my uh, paint bucket tool, and I'm going to fill the background with that navy. Then I'm going to go over to my brush tool, and I am going to change my foreground color to something a little bit lighter, kind of a lighter skyish blue. And my brush is about the right size there. If it wasn't, I'd need to resize it, but it's okay. So I'm going to just draw random lines down across this tile here. So the whole point about this is that they're random. and uh, That a user, when we see a lot of these tiles placed beside one another, they won't discern any type of recognizable pattern. So you want them pretty randomized. And I'm going to change my color there for a little bit of variety as well. I'm going to put on some white stripes here as well. Same brush tool. And some of them I'm putting over the edge. Some of them I'm leaving in the middle. And again, it's just so, so that there's no pattern. There's no recognizable, block, recognizable blocks of space or recognizable lines. They're all pretty much the same. I'm going to flick back onto my sky blue here for a moment and I'll draw on a few more sky blue patterns on top of that. And I'll flick back into my white. Don't want to overdo it either so I'm going to stop pretty soon. Okay, so that's fine. Let's see what happens if I don't use the offset filter and I just go with that particular tile as it is. So I'm going to go to my file menu and I'm going to click on Save for Web and Devices. And if I've got a site root, I'm going to save it into the site root. So I'm going to click on Save here. I'm happy with all the options there. I'm going to find my site root, which is a Project 10 folder on my desktop. So there it is. And I'm going to save it in here. Now, for my Save As option, I have to think of something to call it. I'll just call it something descriptive. So maybe underscore striped underscore bg for background dot jpg and that's fine I'll see at a glance what that is if I see it in a in a folder full of files so I'm going to click save there and that's saved into that site root folder now I'm going to bring up Dreamweaver and I've already set up a site here ready to go I can see that here in my files panel and I can see that navy striped underscore bg.jpg file has just been put into that site root folder so it's just popped up there in my file uh, panel very handily and 
I haven't created any rules on this site yet. I've just created my index.html page and I've created my style1.css and I've linked the two together. So this is going to be my first rule and the rule that I'm going to put in here is to define what the background image of this whole site is going to be. And obviously I'm going to pick the uh, pattern image that I'm just after creating in Photoshop. So to create a rule on that style1.css, I'm going to go up to my CSS styles panel and I'm going to click on my new CSS rule icon, the one with the little plus on it. And the new CSS rule that I want to create, well, I want to define what the background image is going to be for the body of all my web pages. So the body is a tag. It's not a class, so I'm going to drop that down here. And I'm going to pick tag. And automatically, because I haven't created any rules on anything yet, Dreamweaver has luckily guessed that yeah, it's probably the body tag that I want to define something for. If it wasn't the right tag there, I just type in body. And just make sure that it's going to get created in that external style sheet, style1.css. That's fine. So I click OK. And I've got my CSS rule definition dialog box. And there's just one simple thing that I want to do here. I want to click into the background category. And I want to browse for my background image and I go straight into the site root folder. If I'm not there already, I could just click on that site root button to make sure that I'm there. And I just pick out that navy striped underscore bg dot jpg file that I'm just after creating. I'm going to click choose. OK. And I'm going to click OK. And there we see it. Now, even in design view, without even going to the browser, I can see these seams occurring here. I can see these lines where the different tiles are put one beside one another, and I can see that there's there's obviously a join there. And any user that will go to that website will see that join. Now, maybe you might be happy with that if that's your design, but in my case, for this particular exercise that I'm doing, I want to get rid of that seam. I want to get the tiles so that they fit perfectly one beside one another and that they flow in. So that is that the right-hand side of a tile will flow in perfectly to the left-hand side and the bottom will flow in perfectly into the top of the next tile down and so on and so forth. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop and I'm going to edit this file a little bit by using this offset filter that I'm talking about. So I'll go up to this filter menu and the offset filter is hidden way down here in the last grouping underneath the other option. I get a sub menu here and offset is the last one in there. And I click to select that. And what happens then is I get this dialog box up with uh, two different slider bars on it. Now what I can do is I can just slide one the horizontal one to the right a little bit and the vertical one to the left and really what I'm looking for is that it's splitting up the image into four different parts and it's putting all the different sides of the images in beside one another so I can see what the joins will look like. So I'm going to click OK there. I can see what all the different sides of the image, what the joins will look like if they were to put in uh, the next tile along in the sequence and you can see the seams there. Now I want to get rid of those. So again, I'm just going to get my uh, brush and I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit and kind of draw different lines down across those seams. And again, we want it fairly random. We don't want to make it too obvious. And there could be lots of different uh, methods that I could use to, to make this happen. I mean, this clone stamp tool is a good option and there'll be other techniques as well, but just because this is a kind of a very fast technique and it just happens to suit the exercise that I'm doing. Uh, I'm just going to use it. And again, we don't want anything too regular. So I put in a lot of blue stripes there, so I'm going to change back to white. I put in some white. And OK. OK. We're almost there. Not seeing too many scenes now. I'll need to flick now back into my offset filter again. And the thing about it is, is that I'll need to um, change it around a little bit again just to see more seams and see if what I've done, if it just matches up, just move it once more into somewhere else, this offset filter, and let's see what happens. I can see still a few different seams there. 
and uh, I'll just uh, be able to uh, to knock them out of it. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to go back to my file menu and I'm going to again go through the whole save for web and devices option and I'll save it back into the same place. I'm going to replace the version that I had before. Are you sure you want to replace the files? Yes I am. Replace it. And now if I go back into Dreamweaver let's look at how it looks. And so I can see yeah the seams are tending to go there and let's look at it in a browser so I'm going to click in here click on my preferred browser save everything and we'll see the background image it's all tiled in terms of success on that background image yeah it's okay maybe I probably overdid the stripes a little bit and uh, I see a little bit of regularity down here that might be easy to actually pick out if I was looking at the whole background uh, uh, background image like I am at the moment. There's one kind of long diagonal white line there that I can pick out that obviously repeats. Um, but if I put content over that in, uh, in blocks of white, uh, I'll probably get away with it. But in general, that's the idea. And that's how to create tile background images using the offset filter in Photoshop.